are in game live. Welcome to the historic semi final between Tien's Prince Lu and Paul Bester. Um, <sighs> this should be a very good match. Joining me uh, in the commentary or shoutcast petition is Ryan Lello. Hello, Ryan Lello. Hi, everyone. I'm here. Do not worry. Your commentary is saved. Yes, because I don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it looks like we have a little goblin action on this side versus Soltar, I'm assuming, one of the many, many, many Soltar decks. You guys were not very creative in that. Come on, I expected more. <laughs> You're just upset because there were only the two Jun decks and neither of them are going to get to the final. That is, I don't see that as a relevant point in this discussion, but you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, if I have a look at this right now, uh, I see Tense has got a lot of little gobos running around here. Mm, I do you see mm. quite a bit of removal in Paul's hand? Uh, I see two heartless acts. Um, there's a couple okay. of things there I can't quite make out. Definitely a swamp, uh, and a what is that card? I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I wish the screen would be bigger for me, but it doesn't want to be. Mm. If I could close this mini feed in Streamlabs, I'd actually be able to see more. But hey, what are you going to do? You know. Um, so, goblins, goblin, goblins. It looks like missing a third land drop over here. Quite yeah. unfortunate. So let's see what what Lion Tians chooses to take over here. It might be sack the treasure, put a war chief into play. Um, we might just take it a bit Ooh. slower, try hit his land next turn and play a snoop. He's going for the snoop now on his second main phase. So there's a land. Okay, so Unfortunately, he's got, yeah, he's sitting on the won't top of the be able library. to play it with the snoop because a land is not a goblin. And the snoop is gone. He is done snooping for today. For <laughs> now. There will be no snooping right now. Uh, just again, just to do the whole the, the, the run around, welcome back to the Magic the Gathering Arena 2020 Championships in partnership with Comic Con Africa, Easy Gaming Group and the Geek Home. Uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for some of our amazing sponsors who've really jumped in and helped us out immensely with prize support and getting us to this point where we're able to host these events. Uh, and so we just want to say a big thank you to Dungeons & Magic, to uh, The Luck Shack, to Rabbit Knoll Gaming, to Unplug Yourself, to Vein Venom Inc. and to Protea Gaming. Thank you so much for all of your support. It really means the world to us. Thanks to chat. You guys, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but we are now affiliate on Twitch. Thanks to everything that's happened today. Uh, and we also have some new players that are going to be joining us on Ignite Your Spark, which is quite exciting. I see the Goblin War Chief hits the board. Goblins all now have haste. Yes, and uh, the reduction in mana cost, which is going to help Tien's out a lot, yeah. um, considering that he missed the land drop. Thoughtseize before took the, the Cranko. He would have been able to play Cranko this turn with the treasure token from Wily Goblin. Yep. Um, but this, but is now, still, this, is a, this is a five damage punch. It's pretty pretty intense. Yes, I think if uh, there was only one War Chief in hand, maybe... War Chief might have been a consideration, but the double War Chief, you can, you got to take the Krenko, I think. Uh, it depends on the nature of your hand. It's, it's always it's always tough. Heartless um, Act, taking out the War Chief. Another Heartless Act. Okay, okay. An Oops. An Oops. Is that, was that an Oops an, from, from an Paul? An Oops emotes. Yeah, so I think he should have Heartless Act because he had it. If he was going to do it, he should have done it before combat. So before that the, combat, yeah. So that the instigator and the token never had haste. Correct. Um, but unfortunately, if you don't have that uh, that stop at the end of the second main phase, your opponent will go directly to combat, um, so, and that's a bit unfortunate. So here, Tiense has got a bit of a, a decision to make here. He's got the chieftain, the war chief, and the skirk prospector. The war chief obviously gives everything haste and gets the cost reduction down. Uh, mm. But if I'm looking at Paul's hand, I do see a Nissa there. So I'm not sure. All right. Remind me what Goblin Chieftain does. Or can chat just remind can, me yeah, what does. Any chance someone in chat can remind us of Goblin Chieftain? I'm not too au fait with the, all the There's too many goblins. goblins. They all do too many things. So it's hard to keep track. But that is a solid punch. That, that brings Paul down to nine life. 
Okay, we've got an Uro and a Nissa in hand for Paul. Mm. As well as a, a, another card that I can't quite make out. It says, get Gub Scrub. <laughs> Baldurov says, uh, Goblins get plus one, plus one, and haste. Uh, all right, all right, all right. From the Goblin Chieftain. Okay. Uh, okay, so it's something that would be probably lethal next turn if this board of uh, Goblins isn't dealt with this turn. I think a Nissa or an Uro is not well, the Uro, really going to do it. The, uh, maybe. I think... The Uro is just going to gain him the three life, put yeah. another land on the board, yeah, hopefully. And then, well, that's and where then, he's going. Um, oh, but he went Uro first here, so... Looking so for the mana. But he's... even with the land now, I don't think they can play the... Well, they're definitely not going to be able to play Nissa this turn. So they might just be dead if Tienz decides to pull the trigger. Yeah, they could be. Oh, Ooh, it was a Maelstrom Mael Pulse. Pulse. That's there what we he go. had. Okay. Okay, so that, that doesn't quite... Um, that won't make it lethal this turn, but it's still a decent chunk of damage will, will be coming in. And with one card in hand, which we know is Nissa, correct? Yeah. And now a random card. So um, I imagine there's enough cards in the graveyard now for Uro. Um, uh, not 100% sure. Nissa is coming down right now. But now things could get rough, I think, with um, if he's able to Nissa and Uro in the same turn, then that's enough blockers, I think. I still don't understand. Go to Goblin Chieftain, give haste. The goblins get plus one, plus one in haste. Okay, yeah. okay. All right. Someone in chat do the math for me. I'm, I'm too lazy to to do this math. What are we What are we trying to math out here? So Uro's back. Opponent's going to be at seven life and have two blockers. Will seven life, two blockers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, yeah, they will be dead. Yeah, they will, be, they dead. will be dead. Yes. Depending on what the card in hand is. The card that's actually impressed me or did really well against against me, uh, I was playing John Sacrifice, was that new... Oh, and he's just pulled the Castle Embereth. I, I think, sorry, it's just, sorry to interrupt you, Ryan. It's just yeah, yeah. That, that definitely seals the deal, I think. Plays, yeah, they can also just pump the team. Plays that um, up, pump the team, and off we go. Yeah. As, as, I was going to say, the card that kind of impressed me this tournament is the, in the Saltai decks, the one black mana destroy a creature, convert a mana cost two or less or something, and then if it's kicked, it just kills anything. Oh, that Blood, that, Chief, Blood, Blood Chief's Thirst. Yes, yes. It's a very cool card. Mm. I, I personally like that card a lot. Okay, so we are getting some blocks in. Two, two. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not eight. enough. It's, um, it's lethal. The damage is lethal. And I think lethal. even with Skirt Prospect, you can sack the goblins that are being blocked to pump, to add extra mana to use your Castle Ember yeah, if needed. Yeah, so exactly what he's doing right now. It was, uh, he's just I think making... it was a lot. He doesn't need to do this, but... You know, no, he doesn't. But it's, He could be you know. playing around the exact card that I was just speaking about. Um the one uh, black mana no uh, paul's got another uro in his hand okay so he doesn't have it around okay so that should be it game one to the gobos game one to the gobos just just getting the formalities out the way over here yeah okay, i'm not sure what he's going for the pump about. on the on the yeah i think he sacked the wrong Oh, he just wants to kill the land for style points? Okay. Understandable. Okay. Alrighty. So that's game one out the way. Tense, yeah, that to... was... Um, I think... Goblins just was able to play like multiple things each turn. And then the Saltai deck, which was typically spot removal, so one for one removal, couldn't keep up. Um... And obviously, I think play draw kind of matters uh, yeah. as well. Tense, please don't be jumping around into other stuff right now. 
You're totally Jens, what are you missing. doing? What are you oh, doing? He's, he's checking deck lists. I okay. see. Greetings, Johan de Vos. Welcome to the chat. Where have you Crafting been all day? Grafticker's right. cage is the, um, can stop Muxus if if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure it can. Yeah. Um. So that will probably come in. I wonder how much respect Tiens is gonna gonna play towards Grafticker's cage, or if he's gonna move away from the Muxus plan, um, and try to do something else. Um. He has trash master that can you know destroy artifacts and i believe he would have bought in i don't know his exact uh 75 over here but i'm sure he has other ways to deal with such cards such eight cards yeah. uh there he's got braids as well so um yeah yeah, yeah. so master monk says in chat you'll side in the braids for for cage exactly um okay. so yeah i mean cages graveyard hates and Stopping cards coming from your library, whatever these like cards that punish unfair strategies. Mm. Um, oh, look at Tien's just pulling two of braids like a master in, um, in, in the opening hand and Krenko and a Muxus mm. and a Snoop. That's a fairly powerful opening hand for Tien's. Um, I don't think um, we can't see Paul's draw at the moment, but it looks like there's a mulligan happening. Okay, yep. One card goes back. The thing is with with the abrade, I'm not sure how much it actually does if it doesn't um, if it's not destroying an artifact. So that's like the point I was uh, I was trying to get to is sometimes in these decks where you are kind of shut down by Grafticker's Cage, yep. the cards you bring in to stop it are not necessarily good. Yeah. Besides from only dealing with that one specific hate card that you're worried about. So it's always like a kind of push-pull, you know, like how much respect do you want to pay towards this graveyard card? Or do you have enough plan B um, to push through it if, if that card comes down? Uh, and sometimes you just got to accept that, okay, if they have it on their, in their opening hand on turn one, great. You know, if they don't, then I'm, my deck's more streamlined, then I don't have to... You know, put these bad cards in my deck, so it, it's always interesting. Sure. Um, but so let's see. Using the Snoop to play a Snoop. Snoop found another Snoop. The Snoop, Snoop, the Snoop. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm seeing a, a, a Hydroid Crassus, a Disdainful Stroke, and two other cards I can't quite make out in Paul's hand. Mm. Unfortunately, the screen is very small for me. Um, that was interesting. Um, I. To play the second Snoop, when he had a Wily Goblin, he might have been able to power out a a Muxus. So he chose to put another Snoop into play rather than develop his mana. And I think uh, second Snoop is just another. It's just a two-two. Um, yeah. Thanks, Moss if, Monk. If that's what it is. Sorry, Moss Monk. Just saying. It looks like those two cards are languishes, which are languishes. Minus, minus two four, languishes. Mi minus four. Minus four to all creatures. Yeah. So it's just the presence of board wipes. I don't think I would have played the second Snoop. I think I would have played the Goblin instead and drawn the Snoop. Because okay, so now languishes having a Snoop in hand, the second one is quite good to try rebuild after a board wipe. Yeah. Um, and now you're kind of playing a Krenko on an empty board, which isn't that exciting. Yeah, I think perhaps I, I agree with you. I don't think I would have played this, the second Snoop out straight away either. Um but let's see where this goes of course we do know now that paul has a second language in his hand mm, uh, and mm -hmm. it looks like a thrill of possibilities now although i'm not sure if that's correct. thrilling can't quite tell main phase growth spiral probably means that there are a lack of lands oh on, no it's a trium side. it's a trium that's what he had in his hand that i thought was the uh, thrill of possibilities but still okay. got that crassy holding on to that crassy a languish and a disdainful mm. stroke with uro in the graveyard so holding on is kind of smart. I, I think while well, it will pay off. I don't. Uh, if you pay, if you played Crassus that turn, you'll have a two-two, and the abrade would find a home in destroying it. At the moment, the two abrades are dead cards. They're not really doing anything. Sure. Um. So if you played the Crassus there, you're giving value for Tiens to use his his sideboard card, which. 
you wouldn't really want to sure. i don't think so yeah. Also, I think he's also waiting for, for, for Tins to build up a bit of a state and then get a lot more value from that second language. Uh, at minus four, minus yes. four, you could clear quite a lot of, of gobos mm. off of a board. The thing with Krenko now is that Tins doesn't have to commit any more creatures to the board. He can just sit back on Krenko and tap it every turn to create more threats. Sure. Um, and then the languish is really oh, going to just... Oh, okay. Which is vengeance Make does goblins. a thing. Make goblins... Do it now. Make extra goblins just for fun. Do it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no. not going to. The goblins are gone. There we go. Oh, that was a that was lame. a that was a blast. Uh, thanks very much for the comments, chat about the setup in in the stream setup. We really do appreciate it. We worked pretty hard on it, so we're, we're glad you like it. We'll try and make it a bit oh, better next time. Uh, see if we can get a bit more space at the top of the screen there. Uh, I'm sure we can make a plan. Ooh. Oh, Max has got disdainful strokes. Just backhand slap out of the game. <laughs> Pow. Slap him to the graveyard. Foot sack, Maxus. <laughs> <laughs> you boys having fun? Yeah, well, the Gobos are getting getting a bit of a shellacking in the second game here, Adamant. We've got Uro coming how, down out of the graveyard. Is the chat very active? Are you guys having fun, chat? Wow, chat looks okay. Atlas Seven says laugh out loud. I'm hoping that was about the backhand smack, disdainful stroke <laughs> from Maxis. Um, so we'll see how yeah, that chat, goes. Yeah, chat, chat, chat's out and about. Cool. They're having, they're having a thing. <laughs> Cullen Doom thinks we're having a raffle, but he's obviously hearing things. So <laughs> we, we've got a we've got an Ember Earth coming down now, which is going to pump things. But also, all Tense really has here is the Krenko. Uh, those abrades are definitely currently just dead cards. You could you could double up the the abrades on the on, on the, the Uro, Uro if he chooses. But... I suppose. Chat is always. Yeah, active. I just think. Uh, I mean, Chance is obviously a very very good player, one of the best in South Africa, I would say. And I think, um, but I do think this playing the second Snoop. I think you had three chances almost to beat board wipes and karma spells okay he's, first, he's you going your for board the double with, the braid yeah it's like you could first develop your board with the first snoop if it gets taken out then you can play the second snoop develop your board and then if that gets answered then you got the krenko i mean the the maxis sure. uh, backup but he lets two of his main resources die really right in the beginning which it's left him a bit behind now. It's it's going to be very very tough um, to come back. Yeah, I think so as well. Also, the fact that he's now top decking with Krenko on the board, having played out the two of braids. Mm, mm. I mean, Krenko can get out of hand. We'll have to see um, if there's an answer for this, or if uh, if a relevant clock can be can be put on the board. So some um, some deliberate mana tapping from Paul going on. Yeah, I'm going to assume mm. we're going to see that Crassus. Oh no, it's Anissa. Yeah, it's an so just tap your non forest lands. And a uh, languish know. to get rid of the Krenko, and Tiens mm. is wide open here. Yeah, this is going to be. Uh, this is going to be very difficult. Move. Like a Muxus off the top might be. Um, you know, could be pretty good. Yeah, he didn't uh, get it. He pulled, a, he pulled a land. Just a land. Johanna Force says, Hi, Adam. <laughs> Hi, Fussy. <laughs> Fussy. Uh, this is a tense game. I'm loving it, says Raven Array. Yeah, this is a very good game. Yeah, I think this it's turned out a lot better than the first game. first game was just a, a, a goblin moshing. Oh, on a side note, um, chat and fellow commentators. Oh, here comes the Crassy have... as a night. Oh, this is a big Crassy. Yeah, that's big. We have uh, all brother final in the newcomer tournament. We do indeed. Anthony and Damian oh. Eaton will be going head to head for the title of 2020 Arena Newcomer Champion. And that'll be happening all between at 5 o'clock. Wow. Nissa piling on the pressure here. We're going to take six to the face for Tience with a Crassy in reserve in the air for next turn. Unless there's an answer coming soon, I think that Paul's going to take game two fairly comfortably. Yeah, I don't even think yeah. Maxis gets out of this. The Goblin Matron says you can go find a Goblin card. Yes, yes, but I don't think there's enough mana anyway to... 
cast Muxus if you go fetch it, but let's see what what happens here. Oh, and just just so you know, uh, uh, Lelos, we've got a we've got a triome that's ready to be cycled from Paul's hand. Good game. He also had the Blood Chief's Thirst in his hand, the one the, the one drop removal uh, that sure. you were talking about. So that was definitely going to be a something. All right, so that's game two, and that's a one all in this semi final. Uh, Cullen Doom asking me to ask Adam and uh, Adam, how does first strike work? Hmm. I'm Adam, here to host you tournaments, not answer questions. You you hear the what? <laughs> I'm here to host tournaments, not answer questions. There, there, there's your answer, <laughs> Cullen Doom. Nice one. There, we, I, good. I, I'm I'm a lot clearer on first strike. <laughs> 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 Okie dokie. So obviously now, does he? I see immediately pulling those abrades out. Yeah, I think if you're worried about the cage, you could turn to Trash Master. Rather, it it does like you, you know, it's not going to be like a dead card in your hand, and it can still deal with the artifacts. Or you could just go the route of saying, "I don't care about this card. If they draw it, they draw it. If they don't, great. I'll just." You know, do my thing. Um, so, obviously, it feels really, really bad when they when they draw the card that shuts down like your your main game plan. And obviously, it feels really good when they draw it and you have the answer. Sure. But any other combination is just like oh, it's it's irrelevant, really. Sure. Like if they don't if they don't have it, you win. Well, you don't win, but I mean, yeah, your chances are better. Just quickly going to answer a question in chat. Raven Array says, how does first strike will double strike work? I can answer that question. I actually know this. So in Magic Gathering, damage is dealt simultaneously. If your creature has double strike, it has first strike and then a second strike, which means it deals damage first and then it deals damage again. That's how that works. Which means that if it has first strike on a creature with death touch and its first strike damage will kill that creature, this creature doesn't get to do any damage. Therefore, death touch does not take effect uh after that damage has been dealt the first strike damage yes was i right tell me i'm right um no don't say no i'm right <laughs> i'm googling i'm googling right i'm 100 percent right i know i'm right. basically double strike just overrides first strike yeah you can't have first strike and double strike it's double strike or first strike yeah. Um, anyway, this is a this is a pretty good hand by tian so two matrons can fetch uh, a very good hand uh, I'm having a look upstairs to see what Paul's got. And it looks like we have an Uro. We have a Blood Chief's Thirst. We have uh, a good pile of mana, two Growth Spirals. Uh, mm. And it looks like a second Blood Chief's Thirst. So two very cheap early removal spells in black, plus Growth yeah. Spirals and mana to burn. So two very good hands here. This is going to be a tight game. So having a creature with both first strike and double strike is just dumb. Well, you can't really have a creature that has both. It either has first strike or it has double strike. If it has double strike, then it has first strike and then normal damage. Add it together, it gets triple strike. No, there's no triple strike. Don't <laughs> listen to Adam. And there's no last strike either. That's only hey, I think there baseball. was triple strike, actually, just so we're all <laughs> on the same page. I believe it was unstable. They had triple strike <laughs> as a... As a mechanic. All right, we're seeing the uh, war boss come out here nice and early on curve. Yeah, on an empty board. Yeah, Legion war boss put that into play. Um, and yeah, I think the the blood chief's thirst can only deal with uh, CMC two or less unless two you or kick less, it. Unless you kick it, then you can kill anything you like. Mm. So there would be quite a lot of mana required to get rid of this war chief. Um, oh, one more drop, and he's got, he's got it. I think next turn you. Might look to could play Krenko or Matron fetch a Muxus. It just, I guess, it just depends on how this turn plays out. But Tians has options on on his side. He could keep the the pressure going with the Krenko and force your opponent to have a board wipe. And then if they do, then you can Matron and get Muxus. Uh, I don't Paul, know. It's, Paul um, also has a Gorgoroth in hand. He's got the Elder Gorgoroth. Okay, well, there we go. So there's the Chief's Thirst. War, so and now, the Warboss is gone. The Warboss has vanished into a puff of goblin smoke. So now why he's tapped out, you, you could go to Krenko here. Um, you would 
uh, you could go hmm. five strikes it's... is best also known as a club <laughs> Shannon <laughs> We miss him in chat when he's not there, but when he's here, it's just like, can someone just remove him, please? I mean, seriously, Five Strike is the best, also known as a club. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I'll go with her. It's what, that's what the disdainful stroke did to Maxis earlier. Just give him a club. Yeah. Get out of here. We don't want your kind. Elder Gargaroth hits the board. That's a big card. Oof. That is a big card. Oh, wow. Okay. It's good. Prospector. Yeah, this... It's still not over though, even though um, Gargaroth is on. Yeah, this, no, this is, is going to be a interesting turn. Now we can Matron fetch Muxus. We can play Skirt Prospector. We can tap Krenko, get a bunch of the goblins. We can sack the goblins, get, get a, bunch a bunch of, of mana. mana. We can play Muxus, get more goblins. Um, this might be a disgusting turn. Well, I would imagine that the Matron is there very specifically to go fetch Muxus. Yes. I would want Muxus. There he is. Click on Muxus. There we go. There. <laughs> Push the button. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dropping the Skirk Prospector. Going to hit Krenko, I would imagine, now mm. for a bunch of tokens. No, not yet. Not yet. Looks like he's going to combat. I'm seeing two Uros and a growth spiral in Paul's hand. So a lot of life gain. Uh, let's see. The the thing is, if you don't hit a um, a uh, war chief, uh, is it the war chief one that gives haste? One of the three mana ones that give haste. Yes, yeah. Then it's Probably like war chief. yeah. Uh, the other one we spoke about earlier, maybe the one that gives plus one, plus one as well. Um, you know, that could be a problem because then you're just putting power into play, but giving your pumping your creatures and giving them haste plus putting a bunch of power into play might be enough here. This is we'll have to just see what they, turn. what they hit. This is disgusting. Oh, he's still sucking again. Wow. Disgustipating. Here we go. Oh, oh whiffage. Not, not the greatest hits there pulls a krenko and that's pretty much it krenko and another wall boss um okay yeah all right i i didn't see the other wall boss it all happens so, so this is okay but now with the skirt prospector no haste that is that's a good point moss monk no haste yeah no haste but the skirt prospector lets you sack a creature so the wall boss is going to make a goblin that has to attack correct um you can sack it before blocks so that the older gargaroth doesn't trigger its ability um just gotta i believe tns would need to activate full control if he wanted to get that stop directly after declare attacks so let's see if he okay cool okay guys just to let okay, you know perfect. if this game does run over time a little bit that's what we're going to let it do before we jump to the final for the newcomers tournament, okay? Just letting everybody cool. know. So now Tien sacks the goblin so that there's no so free block is, from the Gargaroth. Yeah, no free block from the Gargaroth. Can't make a beastie, can't gain life, mm. can't draw a card. Yes. And he can do the same trick on the on the way back. So if Gargaroth Oh no 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 wait. Gargaroth would attack, that would trigger, so you can't really do anything about that. Yeah. Um Okay. Now I'm co a bit confused here. I believe. Oh, he pulled another oh. Blood Chief's Thirst. There is removal oh, okay. on the board for Maxis if he needs him to, but is Maxis who you would remove now? If you had that removal no. in your hand, who would you go for? Probably Krenko. I don't think Maxis does anything once it's on the board. It's just a 4 4. Um, okay. Now I would probably want to get rid of Krenko. He's gone for the attack to draw a card. Obviously looking for something. Looks like he's pulled a Triumph. Mm, probably not what he was looking for here. He's got a 6-6 six, six that's coming in. Tiense is deciding whether or not to block or not block. He's not going to block. 6 damage yeah, coming through. I think through. that's an easy, an easy no block. And then... Do you have to kill Krenko? I think... If you let Tien's untap, he's going to make a bunch of goblins. Um, yeah. And then he's also going to 
the matron in hand. So the same play we saw last turn, he can just yeah, run it back. It looks like Paul's going for the Blood Chief's Thirst. We just got to see who he targets with it. That's definitely Krenko. There we go. Good, yes. Good call. Yes. The Skirk Prospector could still sack Krenko for a, you know, whatever, a mana, I guess. But would you want to? For a mana. Would you want to? Yes. Good practice. Just sack your creature. <laughs> Just this from the Jund player. Just yes. sacrifice your creature. Just do it. You know you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, if you don't know what to do, just sacrifice your creature. If you don't have a play, sack your creature. <laughs> yes. Always just sack your creature. In a situation like that, just sack your creature. There we like, go. There's... It just gets you in the habit of doing stuff like that. Because what if next time you're just clicking next, 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 and that was an adventure spell, and then you're giving your opponent a free spell when you could have fizzled it? Sure, going for another. What if the, adventure? what if the kill spell gains life? You know, so it's always just better just to fizzle the spell if you can. So going for the goblin matron here. Do you think he's going to try and pull another Muxus, put that Muxus down, and send the other one to the graveyard? I'm not sure. He could also get like Chieftain and then play Krenko and Krenko has haste as well and sure. then give all the one ones haste and then you know, there's there's a lot that you that you could do with that card as well. Um so Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not hundred percent sure what you meant to get here. That was my phone. It sounded mm -hmm. like someone just bumped their head thing is with the mux is you'll have to sacrifice your whole board to to play it sure but i mean your board is just one ones and the mux is legendary so you could sack that maybe keep the the war boss in play uh or giving getting a chieftain would give you could play the Chieftain, sack some goblins, play Krenko. Krenko will have haste, tap Krenko, get a bunch more. Um, there's a lot it's going for you Maxis. could do, yeah. The yep. Muxus Lottery. Let's see. The Muxus Lottery. Feeling lucky, punk? Do, hey, don't call him <laughs> punk. His, his name is Tienz. Of <laughs> Sawaskov. Of, you know... And if you if you do say it, you got to say it properly. I mean, you got to yeah. be feeling lucky. I was saying it punk. ironically. Are you feeling lucky, Punky? I know what you're thinking. He already fired five shots. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> Dirty Harry, man. Tien's still in the tank. This is a... It's it's tough. It, it, this is a... It does, it, my question is, though, does it have to be? Does it have to be this tough? Why... Does it have to be so damn tough? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, says Paul. Hello. Hey, there's too to many see. goblins to take care of. So the other, so goblin uh, would be a good chief call here. is haste and plus one plus one. The goblin war chief is haste and He's mana gone reduction. Muxus. He has okay. gone with the He's Muxus. Muxus. So it looks like we're playing the Muxus lottery yet again. But now, how do we get the Muxus on the board, is the question. You sack all your zombies to the Skirt Prospector. Probably all your goblins. Everything I'm going to say, I'm saying that you said goblins instead of zombies. Because there are no zombies here. Did I say zombies? You did say zombies. Uh, but you didn't. You said goblins. I'm correcting you post <laughs> in, in the future. Okay, sorry, but in sorry. in the past. I really need to get some sleep. I've been away for <laughs> way too long. This Comic Con stuff is nonsense, man. What's going on? <laughs> okay, so sacking the matron. The Getting skirt the, prospector the mana has mined one matron. Has mined a Muxus. Yes. Has mined another matron, and my dog is all wet. Why are you so wet? They've been swimming. Now this is. I, I think the prospector just mines itself here. And leaves like, the war boss on the board. Yes. Uh. No, Maybe. the war boss is gone. The Muxus is down. And okay. the Muxus brings us... Wow, Ooh. that was a hit. 
many things. That was a hit. Now we're drawing many cards Oof. thanks to Ringleader. And Oof. Oof. Yeah, wow. Okay, so now yeah, now we now we're popping off. And yeah, we and we got haste on everything. And we have haste now, and we have mana. And we have Krenko. Okay, wait, uh, Tians. No, no, don't. You can't coach, Bree. <laughs> uh, uh, zombie Goblin says Raven Array. <laughs> yes. Zombie Goblins. Zombie Goblins for the win. Okay, so throwing out the Krenko, I'm guessing Skirk Prospector... Yeah, so now he, now he can tap this stuff. and make a bunch more. All with uh, haste. Um, yeah. And now... Zom Zomblins? <laughs> so your opponent's on a virtual 17 laugh. They block the Muxus. They only take 8, Nine, 12. Ten, so they'll 12, only take so 12 in this case. They'll live. And they've got two Uros in hand and a growth spiral. If you were Paul right now... What do you think your thinking would be? You've got two Uros and a Growth Spiral in hand, and you're looking at this wall of gobos coming at you with your Gorgoroth on the mm. board. What What are you thinking as Paul, besides Urkuk? Yeah, I'm thinking I'm dead. Yeah, because, <laughs> wow, the G was a 12-12 Goblin. Yeah. You have to block Oof. the Muxus. It's very clear. Yes. You have to block... The Maxis with yeah, there we go. The Gorgo. So yeah, are you thinking I need language? Yes, that would also be yeah. a very good, <laughs> very good top deck. Absolutely. So now he has to decide. He's going to have to gain the life. Side. He's drawing a card. Interesting choice, knowing that he's going to go so, to life. Yeah, does he go to two of this? So he's yeah. probably like desperately looking for that language. He's looking for um, something. He's pulled what looks like a hinterland harbor. And then a growth spiral off the top. Oh, so he's got another. He's got another chance at it. He can try growth spiral into it. So let's see. Is there another twist in the tail? So hinterland harbor's coming in. Two uh, green mana. He's hmm. Got two green mana. So he's going to go for the uro. He's going for the uro. He's very specifically tapping those lands. Yes, I think just trying to keep two black mana available in case of a language draw. Okay, so he gets the life. He draws a thought seize, not what he was looking for. No. Not what he was looking for. I think that's game. Yeah, that's that's probably game. The good game. Good game comes out. Good yeah, game good on both game, sides, and I uh, think well played, uh, gents. That's that's that, and Tians, I believe, will be advancing to the final. Well, there we go. Thanks, chat, for watching. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back real soon, Ryan. Thank you for your commentary, and we'll be back real soon with the newcomer final.